We've previously seen that linear time invariant systems described by difference equations are extremely important in signal processing. So in this lecture, we're going to look at the stability and causality of such systems. So recall that if I have a system with an impulse response, h of n, and I pass an input into that system, x of n, then my output, y of n, is a convolution of x of n with h of n. And for stability, that the impulse response has to be absolutely summable. In other words, that the sum from minus infinity to infinity, absolute value of h of n has to be less than infinity. And likewise, causality is easy to express in terms of the impulse response. It means that h of n must be 0 for n less than 0 because the impulse response is the re output of the system due to an input of unit energy occurring at time n equals 0 and nowhere else. So we can't have an output before the input actually arrives there. We are interested in systems described by difference equations, which we'll write in the standard form the sum k equals 0 to n, a k y of n minus k is equal to the sum k equals 0 to m, b k x of n minus k. And these difference equations we've seen before have system functions h of z given by a ratio of polynomials in z inverse where the numerator polynomial is the sum k equals 0 to m, b k, z minus k, and the denominator polynomial is the sum k equals 0 to n, a k, z to the minus k. And the system function is just the z transform of the impulse response. So we have conditions for stability and causality that are expressed in terms of the impulse response, and now we're going to look at what those mean in terms of the parameters of the difference equation. Now for a system to be stable and causal, we know that causality implies the impulse response is right-sided and stability implies the impulse response is absolutely summable. So when I look at inverting this z transform h of z, in order to do that I need to know what the ROC is. And that's something that is not specified by the difference equation. But perhaps we can infer that from our constraints on the system. We're going to take our system function, this ratio of polynomials in z inverse, and factor the numerator and denominator so we have it in pole zero form. And therefore, I have poles that are located at d sub k, and there's capital N of those. I have zeros that are located at c sub k, and there's capital M of those. So for causality, I have to have the right-sided inverse transform for all the poles. Recall that to find the impulse response, we would typically expand this in terms of a partial fraction expansion, and then each pole would have its own term. And when I take the inverse transform of that pole, I want the right-sided term because those are the ones that are corresponding to causal impulse responses. So to get a right-sided inverse transform, the ROC has to extend outward from the pole with the largest radius. In other words, it has to take the form like this. If I have all these poles for the, a particular system, the pole with the largest radius has to mark the boundary of the ROC. In other words, the magnitude of z must be greater than the pole of maximum radius. And if that's the case, then I will have right-sided inverse transforms for all the poles. Now, for stability, we require absolute summability of h of n, which is the inverse transform of h of z. And so we're going to relate the absolute summability in terms of the impulse response to the system function h of z. So we know that for stability we have to have the absolute summability of h of n, so the sum n equals minus infinity to infinity of h, absolute value of h of n and has to be bounded by infinity. Well I can rewrite this sum and express it in terms of a sum from minus infinity to infinity of the absolute value of h of n times the absolute value of z raised to the minus n provided I evaluate this expression at the magnitude of z equals 1 because then this term that I've added in goes away. And that's the same as bringing the absolute value of z inside of that absolute value signs on h which I've written here on the right, absolute value of h of n, z to the minus n, absolute value. At this point, we're going to use the triangle inequality to write this sum of absolute values as being greater than the absolute value of the sum. It could be equal to, of course, as well. 
So now I've written that the absolute summability of h of n is greater than or equal to the sum of the absolute values of h of n, z to the minus n, evaluated at magnitude of z equals 1. And that's nothing more than the magnitude of h of z evaluated at magnitude of z equals 1. So what we've shown here is that the magnitude of h of z evaluated on the unit circle must be bounded. It has to be less than infinity. And that, of course, implies that the region of convergence for h of z must include the unit circle. So now we have some region of convergence information for our system function h of z if we want it to be causal and stable. If we want it to be causal, ROC has to extend outward from the pole of largest radius. If we want it to be stable, the ROC has to include the unit circle. So let's take an example, and here we have a difference equation described by y of n minus 3 halves y of n minus 1 minus y of n minus 2 is equal to 2x of n minus x of n minus 1. And I can take this difference equation and write it in terms of its system function, which is h of z is equal to 2 minus z inverse divided by 1 minus 3 halves z inverse minus z to the minus 2. So we'll factor that in terms of its poles in the denominator and write this as 1 minus 1 half z inverse times 1 minus 2 z inverse. And if I do the partial fraction expansion, I obtain that h of z can be expressed as 2 over 1 minus 2 z inverse plus 1 over 1 plus 1 half z inverse. So let's look at h of n for this particular system. Well, we'll plot the poles and the zeros, and let's look on the left here first. We've got a pole at minus a half, another pole at 2, and then a zero at 1 half. Now for this system to be stable, we want the ROC to include the unit circle, or the magnitude of z equals 1. That implies the ROC has to be a donut, which extends between the radius of the two poles. And if I use this ROC to find the inverse Z transform, I obtain that H of n is negative 1 half to the n U of n minus 2 times 2 to the n U of negative n minus 1. Because the ROC is inside of the pole of radius 2 and outside of the pole of radius 1 half. So this system ends up being stable, but it turns out it's not causal. On the other hand, if we say that we want to look at the causal inverse Z transform, in that case, the ROC has to extend outward from the pole of largest radius, which is the pole at Z equals 2. And when I take the inverse Z transform, I get the right-sided inverse transforms. So I have h of n is negative 1 half raised to the nth power, u of n, plus 2 times 2 to the n, u of n. Well, this second term here, 2 to the n, u of n, ends up blowing up, and this h of n is not stable. It's not absolutely summable, so this corresponds to an unstable system. Well, this example clearly illustrates that for a system to be both stable and causal, all of its poles lie inside of the magnitude of z equals 1. And if all the poles lie inside the magnitude of z equals 1, then we can find a stable and causal system. And we see here that stability and causality are not always compatible. So let's look at a couple more examples to cement these ideas. In this one, I'm going to have a difference equation y of n plus 3 fourths y of n minus 1 plus 1 eighth y of n minus 2 is equal to x of n minus x of n minus 1. We'll write down the system function, h of z, and we'll factor out the denominator to obtain the poles. And we see that we have in the denominator 1 minus 1 half z inverse times 1 plus 1 fourth z inverse. So we have poles at z equals minus a half and minus a fourth. Both of those poles have magnitude less than z equals 1, so they lie inside of the unit circle and I can find a stable and a causal inverse Z transform, or that is, a stable and a causal impulse response H of N. Now in the second example, 
I'm just going to give a Z transform and we'll do it in terms of positive powers of Z. So I have Z squared plus 2Z plus 1 divided by Z minus a half and I'm wondering if this system is stable and causal. Well you can find the poles here and you see that you have a pole at z equals one half that makes the denominator zero and in this case the order of the numerator is greater than the order of the denominator so we also get a pole at z equals infinity so clearly this system cannot be both stable and causal and if we expand out h of z into a form that we can invert turns out it can be written as z minus two plus seven halves over one minus one half z inverse and this leads to an impulse response of delta of n plus 1 minus 2 delta of n plus 7 halves times 1 half to the n u of n. And clearly, this is not a causal inverse z transform because of this delta of n plus 1 term. So this is saying that there's a component to the impulse response that occurs at time n equals minus 1. And clearly, that point in time is before the impulse occurred, so it can't be a causal system. So the relationship of the poles to the unit circle is critical for determining whether a system is stable and causal if it's described by a difference equation. The poles, it turns out, tell us other things about the system as well that we'll explore later.